when I was in my moment where I attempted suicide, the only thing that really kept me alive, because I wanted to live, I think my suicide attempt failed, not because I was a failure at trying to end my life, but because I didn't really want to die. And why is that? Because I did not want to do to my kids what my dad had done to me. It was just that simple. I didn't want to do to my kids what my dad had done to me. And you're like, what did your dad do to you? Well, he abandoned me. I didn't want my kids to have to grow up wondering why it was their father had walked out on them. You know, and and like I did, I spent years blaming myself. Like maybe I was a bad kid. Maybe I was inadequate. Maybe I wasn't worth it. Maybe I wasn't uh, worthy to be loved, worthy to be cared for, worthy to be provided for. And, you know, of course, my kids had nothing to do with the pain that I was going through. As a matter of fact, they were the only ones bringing joy to my life. So. Hi, everybody. My name is Abe Brown, and I'd like to spend a couple of moments speaking with you about finding purpose in the pain. Now, there's no doubt that somebody listening to this video here today needs to hear about finding purpose in the pain, not as some kind of glib sort of gloss over the pain that you're experiencing. But I have discovered in my life that if I can find purpose in the pain, that it literally transforms the pain, not so much into a good thing, but at least into something that has purpose and meaning within my life. Now, I'm a runner, and so a little while ago I was running, and it was interesting because as I was running, I came across this playground, you know, where kids play. And of course, I have a nine-year-old, I have four children, and she's always asking me to take her to the playground. And so I pay a lot of attention to playgrounds, and it was kind of interesting to me when I looked at this playground and I saw on the surface, on the ground, this almost like a rubber mat that was probably three or four inches thick. And uh, of course, the purpose of that rubber mat is so that if the kid falls off the swing or if they slip off the slide or maybe they just happen to hit the ground, that they have this nice rubber cushion. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to be judgmental, but I remember when I was a kid growing up, uh, we didn't have any rubber padding on the ground in the playground. I mean, there was dirt or there was little gravel pieces, but I'll tell you what, there was no nice little rubber protection. Now, I'm actually, as a dad, super happy that that protection is there. But I'll tell you what, it actually really spoke to me about the fact that a lot of the time we want our play to be pain-free. As a matter of fact, the pain management industry is massive in the United States and in Canada. I mean, we all hear about big pharma. And of course, I'm sure many of you have heard about the fentanyl crisis and about opioid addiction. And this is tragic. I spent many years working in mental health and addiction. And what a lot of people don't understand is that so much of that has actually come out of people's desire to medicate pain. Now, of course, if you had a serious workplace injury, I totally understand that. But you know, life in general, and I'm not so much talking about physical pain here, but I'm talking about mental, emotional, financial, business, spiritual Life is not pain-free. As a matter of fact, you know, the the whole industry of the self-help industry is kind of like, hey guys, if you just buy my thing, if you just sign up for my course, if you just join my coaching program, just give me your credit card and you can have a pain-free life. And of course, we all know that's just not realistic. You see, personal growth and development and maturity are almost never without pain. As a matter of fact, you and I can look back on the moments of our lives that have probably shaped us the most, helped us to grow the most, helped us to become who we are in terms of the maturity and the greatness and the strength and the beauty and the brilliance. And I think we all have to admit that so much of that has come out of walking through those times of pain. Why is that? Because when the pain elevates, our development accelerates. I'm going to say that again. When the pain elevates, our development accelerates. And so if you're looking for pain-free play, if you're looking to be able to grow and mature and step into your destiny, I got kind of good news for you and I got bad news for you. The bad news is you're not going to be able to grow without some pain within your life. But the good news is if you lean into the pain, if you learn what you need to learn from that pain, you will become a greater person. You know, thousands of years ago, Aristotle said this, we cannot learn without pain. That's ancient wisdom coming to you here in the 2024 year, right? And so, you know, I found this out in my own life. I'm not coming to you here today 
you know, trying to say that I figured it out. As a matter of fact, so much of my own development has come out of a personal life crash that I experienced in my early 30s when my marriage collapsed, when most of the relationships that I had in that point in time walked away from me, when I even had a personal bankruptcy and a failed attempt at suicide. And I know this might sound crazy to you, but almost every amazing thing in my life today, I can actually point to that moment of pain and say that I am who I am today and I've experienced what I've experienced and I have become who I've become, not because my life was pain-free, but actually because of that painful experience. And you might think like, dude's lost his mind and maybe I have, but I'll tell you what, I would not trade my life and my situation right now for anybody's. I'm so grateful for the life that I have. I'm so grateful for the business that I've built. I'm so grateful for the relationships and the partnerships that I have because that pain caused me to grow and become a better person, a better human a better husband, a better father, a better business person, a better leader, a better manager, a better, you fill in the blanks. You see, so much of the experiences that we have actually have nothing to do with the experience themselves, but they have to do with the story that you're telling yourself. And so if you imagine that your life is about the events, I'm going to tell you that it's actually not about the events. It's about the explanation that you tell yourself about those events. You might think that your life is about the actions that have happened to you, but I'll tell you what, it's actually not about the actions, it's about your analysis of those actions. You might think that it's about your the facts that have occurred, but it's not about the facts for you. It's about the feelings, and it's not so much about the situation, but it's always about the story that you tell yourself. Your whole life is about your story. And so the pain that you've experienced, I guess the question I have for you today is what's the story that you're telling yourself? I'm not trying to minimize for for one second or belittle the pain that you've been through because your pain is precious. We got to honor it. But I'll tell you what, here's the question. What's the story that you're telling yourself about that pain? I mean, yes, there is a way to interpret your pain that is completely disempowering, that literally will take the power away from you. It will strip you of the life and the vitality of that painful experience, and it will leave you powerless. Tell you what, when people have these kinds of traumatic events, it's kind of like they go through that pain and they tell them this, tells this story that my life experiences are the things that hold me back. I'm not grateful for the pain because this pain made me fail in the game. I'm the victim in this story. That's what a disempowering story would tell you. But an empowering story would say that my life experiences are my superpowers, that everything that I have gone through has helped me on the way to where I'm going to, that I wouldn't be who I am. I would not be what I am. I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for the pain that I had walked through. I'm the hero in this story. I have overcome that pain. You see, a disempowering way to look at the pain you've been through is that life is is not happening for you, but it's happening to you. And that's so disempowering because if stuff is happening to you, then you aren't the agent of change. You aren't the empowered person in the relationship. I've got news for you. Life is not happening to you. It's happening for you. So when I went through that painful experience within my life, one of the very first things I had to do was really analyze what's the story that I'm telling myself. And I'm sure maybe this has happened to you. I don't know, but it sure happened to me. Where at first I felt sorry for myself, you know? I felt like, man, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows my sorrow. You know the song. I'm not going to you know, torture you with my singing it. And I realized that that mindset was actually quite a great deal of self-sabotage. That I was self-sabotaging myself. Because I was walking through my story, I was walking through my pain, actually telling myself a story that was disempowering me even more. I mean, the pain itself was hard enough, but I was actually telling myself a story that disempowered me. See, your failure or success is always in your story. And so what I've discovered in my life is that my pain, it's my platform, that my grief is my gift. I tell you, I've discovered this again and again, that my failure is my fortune and that my story is my superpower. So I want to share with you here today a couple of things, not a huge number, but just a few keys 
for taking your pain and helping to grow through it. Why? Because pain is unavoidable, but misery is optional. I'll tell you what, and growth is optional. You know, here's the reality, friends. Every one of us is going to experience pain. I don't care if you're rich or poor. I don't care if you're male or female. I don't care if you're black or white. I don't care where you've gone and where you're going. It doesn't really matter. I'll tell you, you and I, as part and parcel of this human journey, are going to experience pain. And so I say to my clients, pain is mandatory. But I'll tell you what, misery is optional. If you're miserable today, I hate to break this too, and I say this with as much empathy and compassion as I, as I have, and that's a lot, that, that, that if you're miserable, you've chosen that. That's a choice that you've made. You didn't choose the pain, but you chose the misery. And that's about the story that you're telling yourself. So how can I find purpose in the pain? I think the first thing is you need a strong focus. I'll tell you what, one of the things I didn't tell you is that when I went through this crash in my early 30s, lost my marriage, lost my friends, bankrupted my life, you know, and almost lost my kids, I had an attempted suicide attempt. I'll tell you, the thing that pulled me through that, if I can be as honest with you as I can, was when I was a kid growing up, my dad abandoned me. And I'll tell you, that actually shaped me in a profound way. I'll tell you, it was not easy growing up. And the the absence of my father led to all kinds of stuff that I've had to deal with. And if you've been through that, I'm sure you understand. And I'm not telling you that so you feel sorry for me, but I'll tell you, when I was in my moment where I attempted suicide, the only thing that really kept me alive, because I wanted to live, I think my suicide attempt failed, not because I was a failure at trying to end my life, but because I didn't really want to die. And why is that? Because I did not want to do to my kids what my dad had done to me. It was just that simple. I didn't want to do to my kids what my dad had done to me. And you're like, what did your dad do to you? Well, he abandoned me. I didn't want my kids to have to grow up wondering why it was their father had walked out on them. You know, and and like I did, I spent years blaming myself. Like maybe I was a bad kid. Maybe I was inadequate. Maybe I wasn't worth it. Maybe I wasn't uh, worthy to be loved, worthy to be cared for, worthy to be provided for. And, you know, of course, my kids had nothing to do with the pain that I was going through. As a matter of fact, they were the only ones bringing joy to my life. So how could I in good conscience end my own life or abandon them and then sort of sentence them to this life with a therapist and introspection and all of this painful stuff that really they shouldn't have to deal with? How did I find purpose in the pain? Well, the first thing was I had strong focus. I decided that it didn't really matter, that Abe's choices, Abe's life, Abe's agenda was no longer going to be the thing that guided me. I was going to live for my kids. Now, you might you might think I'm some kind of hero when I say that. I'm certainly not trying to come across that way. I'm just trying to tell you that that was the one thing that kept me alive. And that drove literally everything that you see in my life today. And am I a perfect dad? Not for one second. But I can tell you that strong focus will help you get through pain. You see, some of you are struggling in your pain, not because you're not resilient or you're not strong or because you're weak. No, no. It's all about focus. When you have a focus, I'll tell you what, it is unbelievable how powerful you become. But you without focus, you don't really have any superpowers. That's why when people say, man, you know, I got ADD, I got ADHD. Listen, I was diagnosed with that stuff when I was seven years old. So I've been living with that for years. And for years, I told myself this story. Well, I just don't have any focus. I'm just distracted. I just have squirrel syndrome. I just got, you know, whatever. And then I realized most of that part of my language is bullshit. I am who I say I am, not who the doctors have told me that I am. The diagnosis is not meant to be a label to define you. It is meant to be something that helps you understand you. And so I understand myself better because of my diagnosis, but that's not to define and determine who I am. Who are you? Well, that's about your focus because where your focus goes, your energy flows. And so if you have no focus, you literally will have no identity because your energy is literally spread out amongst 90 different things. But when you choose who you are through the power of focus, all of your energy goes there. And then you become unbelievably powerful. I'll tell you what, a low talent, low intelligence person like me, I'll tell you what, with a high level of focus is unstoppable. 
but a high talent, high intelligent person with a low level of focus, I'll tell you what, it literally takes nothing but a McDonald's drive through to stop them on the way to their destiny. I mean, come on, you know exactly what I'm talking about. What's stopping you? The only thing that's stopping you is your lack of focus. And you might say, well, where am I going to get your fo- my focus from? Well, I don't know. You got to dig deep. I'll tell you, for me, I had to dig deep. I had to determine that for me, it was about my kids. Maybe for you, it's about your spouse. Maybe for you, it's about becoming that person that you're meant to be. I mean, Martin Luther King Jr., for him, his focus was about helping his people to get free. He had a dream. Well, no, the MLK, I have a dream speech. I mean, hey, we've all got to find it. We've all got to dig deep and get it going. I'll tell you what, if you want to find purpose in the pain, number one, you need strong focus. The second thing you need is clear perspective. Now, what do I mean by this? On, uh, let, me, let me explain this by contrasting it. When somebody has a, an unclear perspective on pain, what they do is they tell themselves these stories like this. No one's ever gone through what I've gone through. Or, oh, God must hate me, and that's why I'm going through this. Or, man, I am the only one who's ever experienced this before. And, and it's kind of like they don't have clear perspective. Like, it's, it's kind of, I don't know uh, if you've ever met somebody who has, like, white privilege, you know, somebody, some white guy or gal who, like, literally, you know, ha- was born with a silver spoon, kind of like the current prime minister of Canada, uh, Justin Trudeau, and they have no perspective on the fact that literally six out of the eight billion people on this planet are struggling every single day just to get by. And so if I grow up in Manhattan, or if I grow up in LA, or if I grow up in downtown Toronto, and I experience a little bit of pain in my my white little washed world, and all of a sudden I start to feel sorry for myself, like, oh my God, I can't believe it. The Starbucks drive through the lineup is so long. Like, where's my latte? I wanted it flat white, and she didn't make it flat. Like, you know, it's like, come on. Like, first world problems are really, really a problem in, in a lot of the people that I see out there. And I think to myself, you know, there's actually people out there, their biggest problem today is where am I going to get clean drinking water? Where am I going to get a shower? Am I going to find food today? Is there a way that I can, I can escape from, from the slavery that I'm in? Is there a way that I can get out of making a dollar a day and somehow trying to provide for my family? Like sometimes we need to have perspective. I'm so grateful, number one, that I was raised in poverty, but I'm also so grateful. I'm so grateful for that. You say, how come you're grateful for that? Because it's given me perspective. I'll tell you what, I, I've gone to 30 different First Nations right across Canada. I just came back from one yesterday. Right now, our team, we're working with another one right here, uh, a, a, including myself in Calgary. And, and I'll tell you, I go to these First Nations, and people are like, you're not First Nations. How is it that so many First Nations keep inviting you? I'll tell you why. It's because I understand pain. I understand poverty. When I look in their eyes and when they look in mine, they realize this guy gets it. But it's not just because I experienced it. I've also gotten on a plane. I've gone to some of the, the poorest parts of Asia, the poorest parts of Africa. And when I come back here to Canada and my Wi-Fi signal is slow, I don't feel sorry for myself as if like that's some kind of hardship. Do you know, like that is not hardship, friends. You want to know what hardship is, is, is trying to figure out how it is you're going to feed your family every day. And so I just think that we find purpose in the pain when we get clear perspective, are, are you with me? Like, if you agree, I want to see some comments because I'm tired. I, I, maybe it's, it's mainly white people, I think, sometimes other people too, who have so much privilege that they actually think that they're going through something hard. It's like, oh, the drive through is too slow today. I mean, come on. I can't get a Wi-Fi signal. Like, really? Like, that's your biggest problem? If that's your biggest problem, I'll tell you what. You need to get around people who are really suffering, okay? Finding purpose in the pain. Number one, you need a strong focus. Number two, you need a clear perspective. Number three, you need to make an inconvenient choice. Inconvenient choice. Now, uh, an inconvenient choice kind of means this. Everything good in your life comes as a result of not the easy things that you do, but the hard things that you do. And, uh, you know, I have four children. And I was saying the other day that I, there's, there's literally no one I have more respect for than moms. 
I think to myself, what an incredible blessing to be able to carry human life, like literally in your belly. And yet, <clears throat> I'll never be a mom. But when you talk to moms, they'll tell you it's hard having, having, having a child and then the recovery and then all of the stuff that goes into that. And yet, I have yet to find a woman who won't say that that has been the greatest blessing in their life. In other words, the greatest gain having a child has come through the, the greatest pain. And, and I don't know why the universe was set up that way. Like I, if I was setting up the universe, I might have set it up different. I might have been like, you know what? Everything good in your life, ding, is going to come through beautiful experiences and tulips and sunshine and candy and rainbows. But you and I both know it just doesn't work that way. It just doesn't work that way. Now, wouldn't it be cool? Yeah, it'd be so cool. But it, it just doesn't work that way. Like, like if there's no pain then there's no gain. But, but here's the reality. Let, can I give you the, the, the real reality? The reality is that there's all kinds of people who go through pain who have no gain. I, you know, in other words, they go through the pain, but they don't actually become a better person. They actually don't build a better business. They actually don't build a better marriage. They actually don't become a better dad, a better mom, a better friend, a better whatever. They go through the pain and they go through the hardship, and they go through the difficulty, but because they're so busy feeling sorry for themselves, and walking in self-pity, and uh, woe is me, and you know nobody knows the trouble I've seen, they're actually not growing. And so years ago, in my own life, I realized I'm going to go through the pain anyways. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that again. I'm going to go through the pain. Some of it is self-caused. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. But some of it is just life, right? Like some of it is just like the economy. Some of it is just, uh, uh, unfortunately, hurtful people around us. And, and so my, my kind of take on that is if I'm going to go through it anyways, then I might as well leverage it. I might as well learn from it. And you say, well, Abe, how do I do that? Well, how about you ask people? How about you ask people? Like, what can I learn from this pain? So let me get real practical with you, you know? If, if you just lost to somebody, and maybe you've gone through a string of losses, like maybe you lost a job, maybe you, you lost a pet, maybe you lost a couple of loved ones. I mean, we just came out of COVID-19. So maybe the last two, three, four years for you have been about a lot of loss. And, and hey, I, I empathize with that. Loss is hard, uh, you know, but, but that can just be something that you go through painfully and it's like, well, that sucks. Or you can find in that the growth. You can find the gain. Maybe... The universe, the creator, is allowing you to experience those things so that you can help somebody else. Maybe the purpose in your pain is so that you can be a support mechanism for somebody else who needs it. Like maybe, just maybe, it's not all about you. You have no idea who you're going to run into tomorrow. You have no idea who you're going to run into next week. When I grew up uh, experiencing the abandonment and the poverty and the abuse that I did, I don't look on my past with one shred of self-pity. Why? Because I can take you to a hundred people that I personally know who had it way worse than me. But secondly, because my pain has allowed me to get on stages literally all over the planet and to speak to tens of thousands of people. Not only has it allowed me to speak to billionaires and CEOs and entrepreneurs, but it's also allowed me to speak to homeless individuals and to understand what they're going through and to feel the connection to them and to create safety for them. So I don't look at that as, oh, woe is me. It really is hard to be a Brown. I don't look at that at all. I say, hey, thank you for that. You see, the pain, it's going to happen anyways. So why don't you get the game out of it? The fourth, I think, principle that we can do to find purpose in the pain is to find safe community. Now, you and I, when we're going through pain, I'm going to suggest have a tendency to self-isolate. Like, I don't know about you, but when I'm going through pain, I just want to get under the covers and pull the cover over my head and just give me a bowl of chicken noodle soup. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, and I want to withdraw from everybody because it hurts so bad. And though that is the natural response, I'm going to suggest to you here today that that's not the most helpful response. Because when you isolate, that can be a hard thing. Now, I'm also not saying, go on your Facebook <laughs> and tell everybody that you're going through pain. Because that's always weird too. Like when you see people doing that, it, it really smacks of desperation. And I, I, don't, um, 
I don't judge them, but I, I do think it's kind of like weird. Like you're going to attract when you do that people who will just show you that they care, but they don't really mean it. I think what we have to try to find in our lives is who are, who's my circle? Who's my tribe? Who's my community? You know, I heard this a little while ago and I thought it was so cool. This person said that a friend is someone who understands your past, believes in your future, and accepts you for where you are today. I'm going to say that again. Somebody who understands your past, believes in your future, and yet they accept you for where you're at today. So who's that for you? Now, they might not always stroke your ego. They might not always like, you know, tap you on the shoulder and tell you you're the best person ever. Like, I think sometimes we're looking for a friend and we just, we actually just want like emotional chocolate or something. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, just give me an emotional bubble bath. You know, I also want a friend who, who, who's going to challenge me, who's going to call me higher. I want a friend who's going to support me in that place where I'm hard, but also give me a kick in the rear end if I need it, because probably in some ways I do. I, I don't know about you, but I can get stuck in my pain. And in my pain, I can feel very sorry for myself. And what I need in that moment is not a friend who comes along and feels sorry for me and reinforces that, because that's kind of weird. What I need is a friend who says, okay, Abe, I'm with you. I've got you. You're not in this alone. But man, let's move on. Let's move forward. Let's leverage. Let's learn. Let's grow. Let's become. I can do it. You can do it. And so I hope that's helpful to you. How do you find purpose in the pain? Well, number one, you need a strong focus. Number two, you need a clear perspective. Number three, you got to make that inconvenient choice. And number four, you have got to get safe community. I hope this has inspired you. Would you go, if you want some more information on what we do and who we do with and how we do it, go to failuretoflourishing.com. If you have struggled in your life, but you know that you have an unbelievable purpose and an unbelievable destiny, then we are the place for you. So check us out. That's failuretoflourishing.com. Thanks so much for tuning in.